Hello everyone, today we're going to be answering your questions. I'm incredibly sorry for the lateness of this video. I have been uh, procrastinating quite a bit. I've been doing work, school, family, social, all the things. I just haven't been able to do it yet. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, first and foremost, we got Robo the Cool Guy. Have you ever had to use your service weapon in the field as an LEO? Um, use meaning like actually shoot? No. Thank God, no. Absolutely not. I have not had to use my gun ever, thankfully. Now, I've drawn it out more than a few times, um, whether to be for a, a house search or for a felony stop, you name it. Yeah, pulling out our gun is a pretty regular point of the job. So, so it's from Personoid. Why did you decide to become a police officer and would you recommend it to other people? It's a good question. I became a police officer because for me mainly, and this is going to be the answer that most people in law enforcement give you is because I wanted to help people. But more so than that, I had already done the combat medic thing with the military. So I was, I, I'm good with the medical side of things. Feels good. But I never wanted to do that as a full-time job. But I, I still wanted to be in a position to help people. And being a police officer, you're able to do that. Um, I think you really need to find the right department. Whenever you find the right department for you, it's going to be an enjoyable job. Now, if you have a bad department, you don't like your coworkers, and the the overall vibe is off there, you're going to have a rough time. Change up the lighting a little bit, huh? There we go. There we go. Nice and bright on the old face. There we go. Very pretty. Very good. All right. This next one's from Saucy Mama 32. Okay. Okay, after getting introduced to your videos fairly recently, I have a question. Cook in the oven for a second. As an LEO or ex LEO officer, do you play Ray or not in similar games for relaxation? If so, how? Um, honestly, a lot of times the reason why I play Ray or not is because it's good, not mental practice, because you're actually doing the thing, but uh, in, in a way, scrimmaging. And whenever we're working in a scenario where we have an open door, where we need to clear out a house or something like that, being able to work off of different scenarios, um, such as the ones presented in Ready or Not, while not real, can be realistic. And so then I can practice sort of my tactics in the game and then be able to take that practice and then pull it out into the real world. Especially with some stuff like team communication, if I'm working or playing with another person, I can work with that person, that same person in real life, and we'll generally have a pretty good um, back and forth where we know what we're gonna do before we do it. Um, relaxation wise, I don't know if it's relaxation. It is fun though, it's a little bit cathartic. So maybe it is, I don't know, I don't know. It's a lot of fun, so I enjoy it even though the, the devs seem to have given up. Like guys, why are we making a console port? We have so many bugs we still need to fix on the PC version, it's not even. It's fine. It's really fine. All right. The sixth one's from Harleen. Harleen? How do you approach playing games like Ready or Not or similar ones? I mean, I couldn't play them if I were in law enforcement. These kind of jobs are likely to take a toll. So how do you manage it? I would say that games like Ready or Not or like Ground Branch, stuff like that, while realistic, it's not real. Um, you're able to kind of pull back from it and say, okay, this isn't a real thing. And while yes, it is stressful, it's not, it's nowhere near as stressful as the real thing. So I think that playing through it, like, like I said, in the last one can be cathartic in a way in that I get to practice sort of my tactics and um, my breach patterns, stuff like that. It's, it's good scenario based training. And what that does for you is then whenever you have to apply that in real life, you're more prepared. And when you're more prepared, you feel less stressed. And when you feel less stressed in the real thing, then hey, it reflects back on you emotionally. So this next one from Pancho 2069 Nice. Do you think that Ron is really a SWAT shooter since it always comes down to getting in shootouts with suspects? It's a good point. <laughs> I would say, at least from the, the dialogue I had with a lot of the guys that were SWAT, <laughs> especially my supervisor who was SWAT. Most of the time for SWAT stuff, it's it's call outs now. It's no longer um, breach and clearing. It's a lot of calling out. So you're yelling at the dude to come out of the house, you're throwing in robots, you're doing everything but putting the officer inside of that house. 
It's because we are trying to not escalate the situation, especially if it's just a single person in there. There's no reason for it. But if you do have a hostage situation or a situation that is escalating and there are other people's lives at risk, you're going to have to go in. Uh, but to answer the question, I don't know if Radio Knots to the degree of real, real IRL SWAT shooter, but it is probably the closest we can get with most modern day games, I would say. Noodle Soup. Will you do a full face reveal? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. And here's why, because I've seen so many people get doxxed and then basically their whole lives get ruined over whether it be political ideologies or the job they work. And I have zero interest in that. And it's not because I don't want to interact with y'all because it'd be super sick if someone recognized me. I'd be like, hey, what's up, dude? Um, but hey, it's not about me. Realistically, it's about the content. And I like to make it about the content more so than anything. And on top of that, I'd like to make it more about God than myself because it's a lot of what I dedicate this to is because, I mean, look at any of my videos. At the end of it, you'll always see a Bible verse. Unless it's a meme video, in which case, I don't know if it's respectful to put a Bible verse there, so I don't. But it, I mean, like I said before, it's not about me. And a face reveal wouldn't do me any good, really. And on top of that, it's like I said, it's not about me, so. All right, this next one from Pluto3301. What interactions, if any, have you had with the public while doing your job, police or other jobs, if you can't go into it, that left you with a positive memory? People just being nice, something that started cruddy and had a good turnaround, anything of that sort? I like the stuff you do, keep it up, my man. Well, thank you very much, Pluto, appreciate it. I, I hate to say it, but I would say that a lot more negative things stick out in my head than positive. I think that's primarily because it's what a brain does, right? traumatic or scary or bad things will stick in your head much more than the good things. But I will say that there were a lot of great moments. Um, we would do this event in for the 4th of July span of time, and we got to interact with the public a lot. They'd come up, ask questions, say hi. And I don't know, I, I always really enjoyed that quite a bit, but I, I, I don't know. Ultimately, I, I, just enjoyed the and this is something that a lot of other officers will irk at and <laughs> they're gonna tell me in the comments I, I like the community policing aspect to being a police officer being able to provide for the community in one way shape or form or another i i've always loved that so um i like i said before i wish i could specify a, a single time i i really i really can't remember one so sorry my bad all right next one from s bro would you like to see the creators of ron Yo, make a patrol officer game where you respond to normal calls. Um, maybe, I, I would say that's probably ultimately something that will be done more so by the modders than anyone else. I, I think Void has a very specific vision for what they want, and I don't think a patrol response is realistically what they had in mind for this game. Um, that being said, there is Police Simulator, which is, it's not half bad. I would say it's close it's the closest thing to like patrol officer work that i could i could possibly find in the modern day and age but uh yeah no, i know i i think where ready or not is at least it's it's lane is about where it needs to be and i, I honestly i don't think void would be interested in doing it and honestly i don't really want that from them i want a like we we're saying before a, a swat shooter swat-esque shooter all right next one from luke sun or joe mimi more of a 1.0 opinion question, but which AI mod should I use to be a mix of lore accurate for Los Sueños and realism? Okay, I, I had to go look it up just to make sure I didn't do a sanity check, but um, it's called No Crack For You. No Crack For You. Um, I think that one is probably one of the better AI mods so far because it, for me at least, it tamped down the suspects where they would be more willing to surrender a lot more often than just to be absolutely insane and want to get into shootouts every single time so yeah no crack for you i would, I would suggest that one all right raven core police recruitment is down across the united states with so few new officers joining and so many more now resigning than before what do you think needs to be done to increase recruitment and to retain the officers the departments currently have that is a great question and one that goes i think much deeper than this ama could possibly provide i think um i, I a lot of it has to do with administrative stuff, you know, top down level stuff. Um, 
letting officers do their job and not getting in the way of that is very important. And it's a lot of the reason why older officers are, are retiring. They're saying, I'm, I'm done with this. There's no reason for me to do this anymore. Um, and it's not like I'm saying, oh, because they can do bad things or they can, you know, get away with stupid stuff. What I'm saying is that stuff that normally, let's say would result in a complaint from a citizen and would be like, hey, did you do X, Y, Z? Yeah, I did X, Y, Z. Okay, yeah. Well, they call, just let you know, no big deal. Now is, <laughs> I hesitate to use the word or use the words taken more seriously because complaints should be taken seriously, but they are taken more seriously than even the officer's word, which I, I, I don't, I don't particularly enjoy. Like it's, it's fine to want to listen to the public and try and adapt to what they have to say. It's another to placate every single complaint that comes in because a lot of them are just upset. Like, Oh, I got a ticket. This officer was being, you know, biased. No, they, they weren't being biased. You were just doing 55 and a 30. What? I mean, th there's no, <laughs> what do you, I, I understand the reasoning behind like I said before, I understand the reasoning behind wanting to take people seriously, but at the same time, we should maybe do a little bit more filtering for our officers so that way they don't have to deal with that crap. And as far as recruitment goes, this is, it's just a rough time, man. It's just a rough time. You're asking people to enter into a job in which nobody likes them. Nobody respects their authority. They're pissed at the very thought of you even being in the occup the freaking job to begin with. <laughs> It's dangerous in some capacities, and honestly, the negatives outweigh the benefits a majority of the time. It's it's a tough one, man. And and the the only way to incentivize more police recruitment is by increasing pay. But then by increasing pay, you're getting people more pissed off because then they're saying, "Oh, well, police officers are overpaid." And it's, it's like, no, dude, <laughs> it's a very dangerous job. No matter what everyone says, oh, it's not that dangerous. It, it is dangerous. Oh, well, you signed up for it. Yes, of course they signed up for it, but there's a lot of reasons why people sign up for it. So again, to try and establish how to fix the problem, I wish you could say which way is which, but I unfortunately, I don't have the answer to that. So, all right, the next one from Dallas. As a gun nerd, I'm obsessed with how recoil is represented in games. What do you say Ron's is realistic? I think overall it does a pretty good job of simulating recoil. Um, I think that more experienced shooters can stay on target a little bit better, especially with like the 556 platforms. But honestly, like, especially when it comes to like the 308 and the 300 Blackout, I would say its representation is pretty dang on point. All right, next one from Big T. What is your job slash what do you do in your police department? You are very cool, by the way. Well, very, thank you very much, Big T. You're very cool as well. Uh, so here comes some breaking news. I am no longer a police officer. Now, that is not because anything bad happened. It was just because life events occurred and I needed to step away from it and move to a different career path. I, I loved every second of being a police officer and I wouldn't have traded any of those experiences or memories for the world. But... Um, Family comes first, and with that being said, my wife being out in dental school, um, I, I couldn't stand being away from her, so I need to find an occupation which I could be closer to her, and I really didn't have any intention of working at any other police department because I loved the one I worked at. And so with that being said, I made the career switch, and now I'm doing something else. I'm not going to say what that is for right now, just because I don't want to jinx anything, especially this early on, so. Uh, but my job was... Uh, patrol officer. So I was a patrol officer for almost four years and I really enjoyed it, like I said before. Yep, so that was my job. A lot of people thought I was in SWAT or as in a special teams. I was never, I never was. Um, I wanted to be, but I, it, the opportunity came and passed. And by that time I was looking to head out here with my wife. So just wasn't in the cards. All right, next one from Lesnoy. What do you think on adding suspect first aid in Ready or Not, and how do you think it should be implemented? Um, if you mean like the suspects taking care of wounds and stuff like that, I don't really know. Um, most people are not that well versed in, in first aid, uh, whether you believe it or not. 
like stop the bleed stuff is not that common for people to know. Um, it's getting more common, thankfully, but it's honestly for your everyday Joe Schmo, he's not gonna know how to pack a wound um, outside of maybe throwing on a, a tourniquet that that might work. Uh, but yeah, that being said, I don't I don't really see the point in it, honestly. Most of those situations happen pretty quick. So if you take fire, you react to fire, and after reacting to fire, either you or that person you're reacting to is down. So uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really see the point for it, but I understand where you're coming from. Okay, next one from Star or Star Dragonflame. What do you think Ron got wrong or needs to improve or add to the game in your opinion? Also, congrats, man. Stop the killing. Stop the dying. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I don't know. I feel like the rules of engagement stuff could be reworked a little bit, um, especially I, I, I still will get deducted points for reacting to somebody shooting at me and get hit with like a, a use of force violation. It's like, OK. Well, he's shooting at me and even then with people like especially with people reaching up like this and then I get a rules of engagement violation it's like okay but in real life someone's pulling a gun up like this they're going like this to this it, it's a wrap <laughs> there's a lot of stuff right here and I could get better especially if we're talking about just game wise like game wise I think they need to do a lot of soul searching when it comes to their modeling. Um, it feels like a lot of things size wise are proportionally wrong. Um, faces are a little weird looking, very uncanny valley-esque. And I know that they're working on this, but the lip movement was one I know that they brought up, but I don't know. I think bug fixes at this point in time should be their primary focus out of anything realistically all right this next one from kibidon uh it's very long and i'll i'll basically summarize it he's talking about full auto being effective in fps games um and kind of asking why we don't use full auto in cqb situations if we want to eliminate the threat as quick as possible and it's a good question but ultimately it comes down to use of force um justifying every single bullet that comes out of my gun is something I have to do, right? So if I'm shooting semi-auto and I'm shooting and then I see the threat go down, okay, cool. Now I can, I can try and assess my surroundings, see what's going on, and then we can put hands on him. The problem <laughs> comes in if you're just rocking off full auto at one, I just, that's why hands. <clears throat> the problem comes in if you're shooting one person full auto, while yes, it is possible to control the recoil, I don't think your your head gets out of that sort of disoriented state of literally getting bounced over and over and over and over again in that cheek well. I, I think there, it's just too much going on. So ultimately it should be avoided. So people probably disagree with me. I just, I don't think that it's necessary in civilian setting policing. I, I, I don't see this, the point for it. Now, if we're talking military wise, there's a lot of reasons to full auto, um, but in civilian side, no. All right, next one from RKO Autismo <laughs> Jones. What are your thoughts on the fentanyl epidemic and how has it affected you as an LEO? Also, as a medic, could you throw in something about how you can't get high on just touching fentanyl? I'm a paramedic and as much as we joke about it with my cop friends and good fun, I love my cops, Seeing cops scared of fentanyl to the point of panic attacks and self-administering Narcan while fully conscious after pair handing touching it is starting to worry me. So yeah, as far as affecting me as an LEO, I would say that it ultimately didn't really affect me all that much. I interacted with a lot of fentanyl, but I, it never affected me to the degree that I see a lot of these police departments kind of see. I don't like, like you were saying, people will touch it and be like, oh my gosh, I just touched it without gloves. It's, you can absolutely touch it without gloves. It's not going to kill you. That's not how your body absorbs it. It needs to go into your mucosal membranes in order to really uptake that fentanyl. But up until that point, it's not going to do anything by you just touching it. Yeah, it, it, it is a bit annoying to see people's reaction, especially on body cam videos, seeing people freak out as soon as they touch 
fennel. It's like, no, dude, just wash your hands, put some gloves on, pick it up and then bag it. It's as simple as that. You know, again, I, I also don't want to dissuade people from being like, well, I did interact with fentanyl and I'm getting these symptomologies. I'm going to go ahead and be on the safe side and Narcan myself. Um, it, it's just not, it's not the worst thing to do. Is it smart? Because as you know, giving somebody an Narcan that doesn't need it, it's just going to give them a bad headache. That's about it. So, you know, ultimately if they are, people are interacting with fentanyl and get worried that they're now feeling symptomologies that would represent a fentanyl overdose. It's not the worst thing in the world to just say, screw it, Narcan myself and call it a day. But at the same time, yeah, having full on panic attacks over the fact that you've interacted with fentanyl without gloves on, unless you see that stuff atomized in the air and you inhale it and all of a sudden feel really, really drowsy, <laughs> you're probably okay. All right, next one from Bop Society. Are you aware of the Black Powder Red Earth mod for Radio Night and are you gonna do a playthrough once it's released? I am thinking about it. Um, it seems interesting. I, it's just another, it, it is a pretty game changing mod overall, but I don't know. I, I kind of like vanilla, ready or not for the most part, but we may do a live stream on it at some point now that I have decent enough internet. Um, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely try to get a playthrough on it at some point, but it seems interesting, seems interesting. Next one from Byron L. Hey 60, hope you're having a good day, mate. This has probably been asked already, but where did your slogan of stop the killing and stop the dying come from? Is it a universal police thing over there in the States? Best regards, B. Um, so if I'm being fully honest here, stop the killing, stop the dying. I took that from a um, alert training manual. And for those of you wondering, alert stands for advanced law enforcement, rapid response training. Um, it's active shooter scenario training. Um, and so it was, it was one of the first things I saw in the book that really stuck out to me. And I was like, that's a pretty sick, like catchphrase to say, but it didn't like, it was just in that one part of the book. And then it never said it ever again, at least whenever I went through, uh, back in 2020, I think whenever I went through the Academy, it literally had it one time. That was it. And it's what we're supposed to be doing as law enforcement officers, especially in active shooter scenarios. Stop the killing, stop the dying. It's what's most important. All right, next one from Charging Noises Intensify. <laughs> do cops get any freedom of choice in their gear? As in, do they get to choose if they want a rifle slash shotgun or any attachments on their firearm? And do they get to pick their own patrol car or is it fixed for all officers? So this is one of the first ones I would say is department dependent. And um, a lot of these sort of questions are gonna be it's up to the department whether or not they want this. Our department was super lax about this. We were allowed to either take a patrol shotgun or take a patrol rifle after taking the patrol rifle class. Um, as far as attachments go, it was pretty much free willy so long as our armor approved of it. There were specific brands of um, ARs that we could only use. And then the same thing with our, our sights as well as for rail mounted stuff. Our pistols were the things that were most restricted. So like for our pistol, um, we could only use the Glock 17. That was it. Um, and the attachments on there was a weapon mount light and then a red dot. Again, that was it. And those were issued and those are the only ones that were approved. But again, that's up to the department to decide whether or not you can change the pistol or not. It, 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 like I said, before, it really depends on the department. And some departments will not even supply any of this gear for you. So you have to buy it yourself, in which case you're pretty much up up to the, you know, your own discretion, whether you carry a, a Glock 17L or a freaking a Glock 22 or whatever. Uh, as far as patrol vehicles go, for most of the new guys coming in out of FTO, it's probably going to be one of the old Tahoes. The way that we had it was that you, you take the oldest car first so that way we're trying to leave the newer cars to have less miles on them later down the line it could be different at different departments we only had tahoes at my department so then again like you have some other police department that would have uh, chargers or explorers or what have you all right next one coming in from slow mo monday what do you see is the best representation of law enforcement in media? Obviously, many of those stories are embellished for engagement, but are there any instances where you've seen an authentic view of the profession? Honestly, end of watch. And it's not because Jake Gyllenhaal is like my second favorite actor, but he, genuinely, it's a it's a great movie. Pretty much everything in there depicts what patrol officer stuff is like. 
Now, granted, it's obviously for a more, uh, when you say active department, because that sort of stuff generally wouldn't happen at the department I was at. Like I said before, it was a smaller department. But that being said, it, like from everything from getting dressed and from, you know, driving around and patrolling, it did a really good job at depicting everything. All right, next one coming in from Kex. <laughs> All right, so he asks, it's gonna be the same question from the last AMA. When do we get more war crimes with your wife? I mean, she has her PC now, but on more serious note, what do you think about Radio Not 1.0, especially its suspect AI and its reaction times? And something broader, what do you think about policing in Europe? What could the US learn from Europe in the way of policing and vice versa. And please don't go for the low hanging fruit that is Great Britain and its unarmed units. They're the only ones that do that here. Awesome, okay. Um, so with, as far as my wife goes, I'm gonna see about getting her a copy of Ready or Not. I still haven't gotten her one. Um, but she does have a full on gaming computer. We're gamers. And now that we're gonna be both in the same network, we should be able to do that pretty easily. Um, as far as 1.0, I kinda already talked about it. I think that it's, done a lot of good things but it feels it doesn't feel like a 1.0 release as much as it feels like a 0.5 release i think there's a lot of stuff that needs to be polished up and made more pretty and i don't know bug fixes so for them to have called it the 1.0 release I, I get it was to generate sales and to generate interest but it kind of ticked me off that that is what is the flagship 1.0 release, so. And then policing in Europe, uh, honestly, I know next to nothing as in regards to policing in Europe other than the unarmed units. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that given the differences between people's civil liberties and constitutions and stuff like that are likely different than what we have here in the United States, I feel like more stuff can be trampled on like I know that people can get hate speech tickets or whatever in the UK, which is a name to me. But that being said, you know, again, it's a different country. It's a different contract. It's a different set of rules. So if you're in that country, you ascribe to those set of rules. Wish I could say more about it. I just, I just don't know that much about it. All right, next one's coming in from Fran. Ready or not question. How do you approach the maps in the briefings? If you do at all. And how does it help you play the game better? Now, if we're talking by myself, oh dude, I do deep dives, deep dives. Uh, if I'm playing with my friends that really aren't all that interested in going that in depth with things, it doesn't even come up. <laughs> A lot of the times I, I know the map layout well enough to just be like, oh yeah, it's over here. This is over here. I know where this AI is gonna spawn, which is also not a good thing. That's another thing I should say. Uh, they need to change up spawn locations as well as figure out how they do their roaming because it's silly that I can predict pretty much every single time what room AI are going to be. Um, but as far as briefings go, if I'm with a other group of people that are really interested and really detail oriented, or if I'm by myself, I will go through and line by line think about how I'm going to do room entry, what I'm going to use first whether it's a big room, short room, whether it terminates, whether it's a T intersection, I I'll go full bore into it if I need to. But yeah, no, I, I think that that briefing mechanic is nice and something that they definitely did well. Next one from Meepo, are you a pistol guy or a rifle guy? I am definitely a pistol guy, um, much to the chagrin of uh, Hoplophophile's uh, <laughs> Discord. I love pistols quite a bit and I don't know why. I, I think they're just cool. That being said, I'm trying to kit out my current rifle that I have and make it a little bit more spicy because right now it has a, a crappy LPVO and candid <laughs> red dot, uh, an angle foregrip, and 16 inch barrel. So it's it's nothing special by any means. But as far as my pistols go, like I have a Glock 19X, I have a Glock 19, I have a Sig 365XL, I have a Canic. Uh, TP90 Elite Combat, yeah, and I've one more, I'm totally blanking on. Oh, it's an FN509, oh, love that thing. I love pistols, I love the way they look, I love the way they operate. I don't know, I just, I just love pistols. All right, this next one from Sixtos, CC. How do you choose weapon caliber and ammo type in Ready or Not? Can you stun armored enemies with ammo that is incapable of defeating their body armor? I generally just say screw it and use 300 blackout pretty much every time. Like I'll do um, 
FMJ threw in her blackout and called it a day. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. Is it realistic? Not entirely, but at the same time, I, I, I love cheesing every now and then just throw in her blackout and run through rooms. Now, as far as being able to not defeat some of these armor and stun them, I think the nine mil will do that, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to go back through and play and see if that happens. It's a good question. All right, next one from Popsicle Cat. Have you ever considered getting into VR? It has some games that are pretty similar to Ready or Not, like Technical Soul VR, and the upcoming game Geronimo, to name a couple. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I have been playing Technical Soul VR with my uh, buddies from work, uh, from the police department. A um, lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now, it's not super duper high res realistic, but at the same time, it's super enjoyable and you can work through a lot of the same tactics like I said before that we use in real life. It's it's, it's pretty dang good. Geronimo, I cannot wait for that to drop. I have that on my wish list. It's sitting in ready to go. As soon as the devs are, are launching that bad boy, I'm buying it, bro. But yes, I think we'll do some VR videos here soon. I'm going to try to do a VR live stream at some point. Um, like I said, now that I can, I maybe will be able to do that given that the internet situation is a lot better now. All right, next one from Bean. Why did you start YouTube? And I noticed that in your first couple of videos, you didn't talk. Why the change? God bless. Well, God bless you too, Bean. I started it because I saw that a lot of the stuff that we learn in law enforcement or even in the military is not inaccessible, but is not well explained. And I felt like I could bridge that gap. I felt like I could explain it in a way that's easily understandable for most people. Um, and also explaining why we do what we do. So yeah, trying to bridge the gap is, is most of the things that I try to do in this channel and at the same time also just for fun. Um, and the first couple I didn't talk because I was super worried about <laughs> getting doxxed and here I am with my eyes open and ready to get doxxed. A moment's notice. I think that I also didn't have a, I don't think I had a microphone whenever I first started this channel. So I, I think it was, yeah, no, I didn't have a microphone at all. I, I said, you know what? Let's just make a couple videos. I'll try to type everything out, make it explanatory so people can see. And then I realized that most people weren't like just sitting there watching my video. You know, they play in the background or something like that. Cause that's what I do. If, whenever I'm like playing video games or doing something else, I'll have a video in the background and having something, having someone explain things out loud is much more efficient and effective than just writing text on a video. So, all right, the cosmic kid. I currently have my NYS paramedic, but I don't have any formal military or law enforcement training. My local SWAT team is seeking volunteers to serve as medics on the entry team. And I was wondering if you know any courses or classes I could take to get me a leg up in the selection process. So one of the things that you can do is get your EMT T, so your EMT tactical, or you could get your TMS, uh, tactical emergency medicine. Yeah, look up, look up uh, EMT T as well as TM, TEMS, and that should give you a good starting point. As well as that, go get your TCCC certifications because tactical combat casualty care um, <laughs> is very important and is also not taught civilian side, which I think is insane. Knowing TCCC, especially for SWAT dudes, is going to set you ahead. Being able to know when care under fire is where versus technical field care versus technical evacuation care. That stuff is very important. Um, EMTT, your TEMS, and then your TCCC certifications will put you way ahead of most other people. All right. Chris asks, what department do you work for? General area, if you can't say. Yeah. So once again, I'm not going to say anything about that. And it's not because I don't like the department I worked at. I love the department I worked at, but at the same time, if I were to give you that information, you'd probably figure out who I was pretty quick. So uh, I'm not going to give that away. The most generic I can give you is the North Texas area. That's where I was out of. And then the last one from Eden, what was the most helpful tip you were trained in? And this is something that a lot of people say all the time. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Accelerating things will screw you over more times than you just taking it bit by bit. Slowing things down in scenarios and taking a breath and figuring out exactly what's going on will set you apart from everyone else. Because while everyone else is running around like a chicken with their head cut off, you'll be sitting there thinking through what the problem is currently 
and then be able to make decisive decisions moving forward. I had a, a female that was screaming and yelling and doing X, Y, Z because she wanted me to do something about her husband that was beating her up and she's yelling, she's, he's in there, he's in there. I mean, dude is sitting at the foot of the, the staircase. He's not doing anything now. So what does it do me any good by sprinting in there, tackling the guy, throwing handcuffs on? Doesn't do anyone good. Someone's trying to accelerate you, slow it down. That'd be my best piece of advice for you going forward. So there you go, people. There you go. We got the AMA finally done. We finally got all this worked out. Had over 30 questions. Thank you guys so much for your questions. I really appreciate that. Yeah, like I said before, I am no longer a police officer, although I, I love the time I, I had as a police officer. I'm still going to put out content related to that sort of stuff because I can still pass on bits of knowledge that I have. Also, as of last month, I am no longer in the military either. I uh, ETS'd um, honorably, thank God. Got out of the military, no longer a police officer. I'm just a civilian now. I'm a, I'm a scummy civilian. <laughs> Thank you all so much for submitting your questions. I really do appreciate it, like I said before. The amount of support that I've gotten, especially on what's essentially a dead channel right now because I haven't been able to post any content because I've been moving and doing job stuff and job hunting and all the rest of it. Having this amount of support, especially in the Discord, means a lot to me. Thank you all so very much. And look forward to some more content coming out soon now that, like I said before, I have a very stable, sort of internet and living situation and uh, and job things are looking a little bit better as far as content goes so make sure to stay tuned but anyways thank you all so much for watching i really do appreciate it and as always remember our sole objectives stop the killing stop the dying i'll see y'all later